there. That's it. That's him. What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Georgia. Remember when they invaded Georgia? I don't know if you guys remember. I think it was like 2008. Slowly and surely, he wants to build a Eurasian Union. He can't do it with like the, like the old Eastern Bloc countries, like say with Poland and East East uh, Germany and maybe Slovakia, the Czech Republic. He can't do that with them because they have a taste of Western culture, and they're like, "Fuck that!" But they wanted to keep Ukraine because they felt Ukraine was essential to like to bringing back the the Soviet Union again. So, like I said, the the, the, the exiled Russian Ukrainian president signed the deal. The people weren't having it. Like it was a clear majority. It was. It wasn't like there was no like. It wasn't like it was five or two nutballs like we have in the states. You know, walking around downtown and your state capital with guns or whatever, saying, "Hey, I'm a nut. You know, I ain't going for this. Impeach everybody. Get them out of there. Let God sort them out." There was a clear majority in Ukraine, and so that was the people wanted it, and uh, President didn't want to join NATO. Because he was, he was getting pressure from Putin. Basically, people were saying he's he Putin's puppet. So what happened was, you saw the events unfold on TV. The people were rioting. Well, rioting. The people were, well, they got to riot the stage. They were protesting until, oh boy, he sucked the, the, the national police and the Kiev police and all that, and they started doing their thing. What happened was, I think the, the, the national police and the military were like, well... We don't agree with this. So what happened was they didn't, they stopped like enforcing a lot of stuff on the protesters. And what happened was at the end, at the end of all this, the exile president is still in, in Russia, he's exiled. And there's a new president. So in the meanwhile, Russia and their, in their wisdom, they have that, like I told you, they have a base in Crimea, in Crimea. In Crimea. That's only Crimea. It's like a naval base. So their excuse was we're protecting the interests of the ethnic Russians and our interests, but they, they deployed like 30,000, at first it wasn't a, a big scale, it was like I think 3,000 to 10,000 troops that were deployed, I'm not sure you have to look this up, but in the end, or even right now, I think it's like 30,000. So they basically they, they flooded the, the whole peninsula there. And current, and Crimea is like a rich resort, resorty town, resorty area. It's like, it used to be like a resort, uh, resort area, I guess. So that was now you got all this going on and you got Crimea who wants to leave Ukraine. Basically what Ukraine did to Russia, Crimea wants to do to Ukraine. And now they're saying, holy hell, you can't do this, you can't do that. Basically it looks like a little bit of civil war to me. So now, Russia's in Crimea, Ukraine's this, we got Kerry over there, Biden, Putin, Putin's riding naked on horseback, and you know how the story goes. So now we come to the point is, Obama's like, well, we're going to do sanctions, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Sanctions will work, but here's what you got to understand. Russians were coming, Russia's one of the countries, look this up, it's a BRIC country, B-R-I-C. And I think it was what? It was Brazil, Russia, and there's two other countries, India and China. Yeah, that's what it is. They're, they're called BRIC countries because they're developing countries and they're developing economies. So Russia played right, they can withstand some sanctions. I mean, we only, and that's another thing I want to talk about. They were, the president is freezing money. So I thought to myself, hold up, man, my money's going to get froze. Because if I'm doing business with them, I'm getting froze, so my checks are getting stopped up. But I have to wait and see on that. And I, if it is, and I understand, I'm an American. I gotta take it. I gotta take my lumps like every other other American, don't I? But that's not the point here or there. So Obama wants to hit it right in the wallet, and that's the best way. And me personally, I think you have to hit Putin. You, you won't hit Putin in the wallet. Putin's a Putin. Going to do what he's going to do. I think, honestly, I think Putin has lo lost a little bit of touch of reality. He's not. He, I admire his leadership. Don't get me wrong. Because let me tell you, folks, something. 
since he's done this, he wasn't having great, he wasn't really doing great in the polls, but now that he's done this, he's had a little resurgence. And now the people are starting to love this dude again, because he's, he's, he's bringing back the Soviet pride. Now, when they were in uh, the Olympics in Sochi, they hit a lot of monuments of dealing with Stalin with that, because like, you know what Stalin did to folks? If you don't know, read a book. I'm not, I'm not on time, I have time to tell you, but I'm not going to today. So what happened was Putin covered all that stuff in Sochi. So now back to the story. So now the bomber is like saying, well, we're not gonna, we're gonna hit some of your key people. Here, here's the thing about, uh, about Russia. There's a group called the oligarchs. And if you know what an oligarchy is, again, if you don't, look it up. If I'm using too big of a words, go to my video where I talk about, you know, Ike for President, it's a little campy tune or whatever. Go listen to that. There's called the oligarchs. And the oligarchs basically are the people who have Putin's back. They're the ones who Putin really, I don't say, I don't say cowards too. They have a, they have a, they have a lot of influence over Putin. Because he, Putin, they, have, they, Putin has to have, they have to have Putin's back for him to do a lot of stuff he's doing. Now, when you start hitting the oligarchs, these are the guys that own all the heavy industries in Russia, like your oil, your gas, gas. I don't know if Gazprom is. Hey, my Russian friends, is Gazprom still public or private? I'm not sure, but there's a lot of right. If you go to Russia, they got a lot of mostly got a lot of new money. They got a lot of millionaires, and a couple billionaires. They got a lot of new money. When, once they start privatizing everything, it, it, it ran with the ball. But uh, me personally, outside of military action, which I don't foresee us doing, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. There might be some proxy stuff going on, you know what I mean? We might supply Ukraine here and there, and there might be some proxy wars going on. But outside of military actions, a great way of punishing Russia is going to be through economics. Because the oligarchs, at the end of the day, they're like, if my money stops, he got to go. They're, they won't support Putin as well. Putin's running high right now with the common man because he plays himself off as the common man. But don't forget, Putin was a spy over in East Germany, and the East German chan Chancellor Merkel, she really don't trust this dude because she was born in East Germany, and she knows how it was coming uh, under, under communist rule. So, and, the, and then let, let me tell you something, whenever he invaded Crimea, check this out, the ruble went down like 34 to 40 compared to the, something like that compared to the dollar and the, and the business people of Russia they, they don't want the resources cut off they don't want the ruble to go down you know and, and money doesn't have and money doesn't make for war it doesn't money money does not love war look at the wars that look at the conflicts and wars we've been in and look at the money you know Russian businessmen have a big say in that country and if the, and they, we do business, if they want to do, keep doing business with the West, we won't be able to do it under sanctions. And that's one way how you can get to them. And you know, this might be the first of the solution, you know, like I said, Putin wants to reunite the, he wants to unite the USSR, excuse me for a minute. But, honestly, is he going to do it? I don't think he's going to do it. You know, okay, so, the, so we got that now, Pat. We can, we talked about that. And is that this was about like what, good 15 minutes? See, it's, it's deep for me because I'm I am actually interested in going and listening to all this. So now, now Russia, now Russia invaded Crimea. They invaded, they basically invaded the sovereign country of Ukraine. The, the Russian financials, the Russian financials, the the, stir, the financial the economy fell a little bit. Russia had to had to cut interest rates by one half, one and one and a half percentage points, just to just to shore up the ruble. You know, and let me tell you something, folks. That's great for if you want to invest in Russia. That's great if they cut the interest rates. It's great anytime they cut the investment rates, like the Feds. It's good. So they cut the. It's great for investing, but it's not great for the Russian economy as a whole. Now, remind you, the oligarchs control the country. So if they can control the country, they're losing money with that interest rate going up by 1.5%. You know, Putin needs to, like I said, Putin needs to worry about the oligarchs. You know, they control much of the industries, you know. 
But it, let me get this way. If the market keeps falling, Putin's going to have to do something. Right now, he's, he, he's cool. Now, we got all that now, Pat. So what's this mean for us in Ukraine? Personally, in America, I mean, we all know what Putin's doing is bullshit. We all know he's being funny. We all know he's he's doing his little nut shit. We all know that. But is is, is is what can we what can America do? You think we're going to military? I mean, they're talking about if you haven't. I don't know if I post any of these other my videos. They're talking about cutting the military. I think they're trying to cut the numbers down to like under four hundred thousand troops. So we just came from a conflicts in the Middle East and Afghanistan. And if we possibly go to Russia, what now? This is the reason why I feel defense should never be touched. If there's if there's one thing, I'm talking even Social Security. If there's one thing that should never be touched in the budget, I mean, this should be this should be rubber stamp. Defense should have its own separate budget. It should be the budget of the United States and the budget of the United States defense, and that should always be rubber stamp. We should always have to protect our country because you never know. Now, they want to see a democracy over in Ukraine, it's cool. But how can you want to see a democracy in Ukraine when the people of Crimea are doing the same thing that the people of Ukraine did to the president? Now, Russia doesn't recognize this, this whole deal in Ukraine. He already said this. And, and that he's, he's hinting he's going to invade. It wouldn't surprise me if he did, because he keeps hinting. That's it. That's him.